Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Andrew uh, Lezizou. I'm from uh, Vin Universities, and uh, I'm very uh, honored to present this work on uh, the behalf of uh, all the team um, who could not be here. So our work is actually looking at um, two different aspects of uh, federated recommendation training. Uh, first of all is efficiencies and uh, the securities. So uh, we know that this training uh, process is iterative, right? So it requires a lot of uh, rounds of communications uh, and uh, message exchange between uh, the server and the clients. So uh, we hope that uh, we should come up with a way to make it more efficient as well as uh, preventing unauthorized access to the to the uh, data. In this case, is a gradient uh, from the uh, client to the servers. Uh, so this uh, slide is basically illustrate the um, uh, a very uh, general schematic. Um, uh, overview of the federated recommendations where you have uh, multiple devices as clients and then you have a server uh, and then uh, the server uh, we do the aggregation uh, job right try to uh, uh, update the global model from the, all the gradients sent from the clients uh, on the other side the client will use a global model sent from the server download from the server to update a local model uh, based on the local data that uh, it possess. And then it's going to send back uh, what we call the uh, the delta value. In this case, the difference between the uh, the global model in the current round and then the, the global model that it received from the servers. Uh, so what uh, we see is uh, when uh, the system is big, right? Let's say you have a lot of um, items then uh, the payload uh, or the communication payload could be big and uh, there's also the possibility that the the bottleneck of communication could come uh, because of the client's um, network connections is low or the communication bandwidth is is, is unstable uh, so uh, and then another privacy uh, so sorry security concerns is that the the server it's curious server can actually infer the the ratings of the users uh, based on the um, the gradients so it is a gradient uh, leakage uh, issue that i think some of the previous study has discussed uh, so uh, yeah we identify these challenges and then we say um, there should be a way to address these concerns so for the communication costs um, our approach is that can we make the message more compact uh, various uh, compression techniques and then uh, to address the privacy concerns then we want to use um, uh, a strong um, security mechanism but still work on on, on the uh, like homomorphic encryptions so it could still be able to uh, encrypt um, and then you still perform um, the operations on the ciphertext uh, however, another challenge with this is that uh, usually the message compression techniques uh, don't uh, are not usually compatible with homomorphic encryptions, you know, because a lot of uh, uh, overhead costs are required to do the encryption and decryption on uh, the server side or the client side. Uh, yeah, so yeah, basically that is what I just said. Um, uh, usually, it suffer from uh, impractical overhead. Uh, computational costs and uh, current compression techniques like um, SVD or top case uh, specifications uh, they are sort of like require metric multiplication right and of course you can do uh, fully homomorphic encryptions but it is very costly so uh, we would rather prefer a method that is compatible with and require only let's say additive or homomorphic encryptions uh, that is much more efficient uh, yeah, so that is basically the, the method that we propose. Um, so again, we have server side to the aggregation and the client side uh, do the local update to create the local models. Um, but the difference here is that we uh, we project, uh, we, we sort of like we analyze uh, uh, the, the change uh, of the local model with respect to the global model. And we, we see that uh, actually this change is, is really real rank, right? Uh, because of the sparsity in the in the data uh, of the local data, like uh, each each uh, client is only actually uh, possess a small fraction of the data uh, of the entire uh, network. 
So uh, the change is actually not uh, really um, full rank, but low rank. So that's why you can see that the, the update, the change on the client is actually uh, factorized into uh, the product or the multiplication of two row rank matrix, uh, B and A. Uh, and what, uh, what is special about this is the B, um, the B matrix is actually shared among all the clients. So uh, technically, it's, um, you actually only need to send the row rank metric A from the client to the servers, right? That reduces the uh, combination cost. And at the same time, uh, because you share the B, right? And then let's say the server also knows the B matrix. So what it basically needs to do is just to do the summation of all the metric A sent by all the clients. So, um, so technically, that reduces the uh, communication uh, cost uh, of the entire network. And um, uh, le later, you can actually s um, you can actually see that this sort of method allows you to perform additive homomorphic encryptions because uh, you only do the additions. So uh, you can uh, require the client to encrypt the metric aioli, and then the server and can still do the uh, addition or summations over all the metric a's without the need of knowing what is uh, actually metric a sent from the, the client. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is just to give you a, a sense of why we think it's row rank. Um, this is ba basically the empirical analysis that we perform on two data set um, using a federated uh, metric factorization method and the um, optimization uh, method is uh, federated averaging. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, basically this is what I uh, presented earlier. We now have a share B matrix among all the clients. And then uh, the A is actually uh, something that uh, the only the clients could know. And then before they send to the server, they will perform homomorphic encryptions. And the homomorphic encryption methods is only need to be additive. All right, so yeah, uh, and then another another aspect that we look at is uh, maybe there's uh, some sort of heterogeneity um, among the computings on computational budget of the clients. So uh, it could be that um, certain client can only afford to do uh, computation for a certain level uh, low rank. Like it's not always like you have uh, rank uh, uh, a rank uh, like like homogeneous rank or same rank for all the clients. So uh, this mechanism actually allows you to maybe only select a subset of components uh, that that is uh, you know within the computational budget of the clients, and then still allows um, the entire system to sort of like benefit from this uh, sort of correlated row rank structure update um, training. So, uh, so you just need to introduce a a matrix that uh, do the uh, samplings, which is the matrix S in this case, right? So uh, to ver uh, validate um, our uh, proposed method, we uh, use two data sets: uh, MovieLens mo one million and Pinterest, uh, and you know all the utilities that we use to evaluate, including hit rate and cumul cumulative gain. Um, uh, for uh, we we compare with um, the standard federated metric factorization method. This is our baseline, and then two other compression method that we uh, compare to is uh, you know, when you have the the update right from the client, you do the uh, single uh, value decompositions, or you can do top case specification to reduce the uh, the size of the the metric to send to the servers, um, and then you have some certain threshold of load reductions, right? Because active zero method, you can actually set uh, what is the reduction uh, level uh, that you want to achieve. Uh, but of course, the trade-off is that you you gonna sacrifice uh, the utilities uh, performance. Uh, so the results here basically show that for uh, for this compared to the standard uh, base lines, um, then we actually have um, uh, sort of like. Uh, better reductions uh, in terms of payload size, but with a uh, lower level of uh, performance degenerations. Uh, and this is um, compared to the FET uh, metric factorization method. But technically, you can use it uh, low-range training for 
other types of filtered um, uh, recommendation that based on metric factorizations. Uh, yeah, so uh, again, this uh, this method is going comparing to other uh, message compression method. Then uh, it's it's still uh, effective um, in terms of preserving the original performance of the the baseline models, but uh, at the same time achieving uh, good uh, payload reductions percentage. Um, yeah, this is just a conversion analysis. Uh, so uh, I, I mentioned about homomorphic encryptions, right? So here, what we actually reporting is uh, how much uh, computing uh, in terms needed to performing uh, client overhead computings, and then uh, how much uh, computational overhead is needed on the server side, and then what is the size of the cipher text uh, that um, that is a result of the encryptions uh, process. Uh, so the cipher text basically. Uh, reflecting, uh, you know, wha what is the size of the communications sending from the client to the servers. Uh, so what what we are showing here is compared to the uh, method like TFK uh, specification, then uh, COLA, which is our method, is uh, more efficient in terms of the size, but at the same, same time, um, you know, still still achieving better, uh, more efficient client and server overhead cost. Uh, so this uh, experiment is to talk about the you know the the um, heterogeneous setting where you actually set a global rank, but uh, when you do the updating, you are flexible in terms of choosing what is a local rank for each of the client device. Uh, so it could be any value that uh, within one to the global rank. Um, so this is to illustrate that this mechanism is all of flexible in terms of accommodating uh, different devices with different uh, computational budgets uh, within the framework. Yeah, so to sum up, uh, we're basically uh, introducing um, COLA and S-COLA uh, to tackle uh, two communication challenges in training federated recommender systems, uh, efficiency in communication and securities. Uh, we show that the, the effectiveness of our methods compared to a previous uh, well-known uh, compression method and show that it's actually compatible with a uh, method like homomorphic encryptions to guarantee the security of the whole system. So with that, uh, thank you very much and uh, I'm welcoming any question if you have. Thank you.